in answering the question, what is my least favorite type of repair or least favorite type of fault isolation, look no further than this twin reverb we have before us. This one right here, a complaint of a terrible noise when taken out of standby during startup. Uh, described as a deep uh, whirring sound, like whir, 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 like that, over and over again, scared the owner of the amplifier, uh, who immediately shut it down, and uh, later, a couple minutes later, attempted again, turn it on, uh, see if this problem existed again, and, and it did, uh, let somebody else hear it as it happened, shut it down again, happened then another time, testing it, showing to somebody, shut it down, about a... Um, a week later, came down there, he said, listen to this, I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to take it out of standby because I wanted to hear what it sounded like, obviously. Turns it on, amp sounded fine, of course it did, because I was there. And, and right there, right off the bat, you know this is going to be a job I'm not going to enjoy because it's an intermittent problem. So I got it on the bench, and what I did was, because I don't feel like blowing up the speakers, is I hooked up my, my piece of crap speaker uh, to the back of the amp, and I fired it up, and obviously I, I need to shut it down quick, I didn't do it on video. And it sounded just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So I have to start what's going to be a troubleshooting procedure of an amplifier that, by every definition right now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with. So let's get started and find the problem with this perfectly working Fender Twin Reverb. And I'm really going to have to start by, by looking for any clues whatsoever, any type of sound, any artifact. So some extra set of cables here for the tank sitting in the back of the uh, amplifier case. And immediately I'm getting suspicious I want to take this cable that, that I pulled out from the bottom, as well as the cable currently installed in the amplifier over here. I want to test out both of these. I'm already getting a, a, a suspicious feeling that there could be a problem there. That could cause the type of issues that have been described. Test the connections on the tank as well. One thing I immediately like to check and look for is uh, looking at the output over here as it's clearly labeled as output we go and, and trace back a cable and obviously it stands to reason that that one would be going to output trace that back to here we can see that's going to output make sure they weren't crossed so that's just fine pull that out it's, it's quite possible the contacts in here could use a little cleaning We're going to be opening up the reverb tank, and there, there's nothing wrong with the operation of this tank. All I'm going to be doing is cleaning these jacks right here that probably have never been cleaned uh, since the day the amp was built. When I see uh, cable swap out stuffed in the back of the amplifier, I get the feeling that there's probably been some uh, reverb connection issues, and most likely uh, it points towards not so much the cables, but the connections themselves. You see everything in the tank appears to be in good working order and no problems whatsoever. Mechanically, everything looks fine. The wire connections are good. The solder connections are good. The only thing that I would like to do is clean these connectors right here. See on the, the inside, clean them with a brush and some deoxit. There we go, that should be it. Get this back cover off right quick. It'll be easier to work. Put the bag inside the bottom of the amp. I'm going to place the tank, just, just lay it on the bag like this so the amp could be turned back on. At least at a minimum, I've reseated everything and adjust enough to get my uh, my current meters on one or more of the tubes and see what the bias is. We'll get this cooking suit we got. I'm gonna bring it to about 31. And I'll tell you why. This amplifier sits plugged in all day. Uh, 
in a building whose power is uh, quite a bit higher than normal. And so what I did was I, I brought back the bias a couple milliamps to, to make up for that difference. So I just dropped it back just a couple to, to ease that a bit. I'm going to have to go really quickly, though, and evaluate all tubes to see if they sit in around now 31 milliamps. Well, that can't be it. Find right, another one sitting in around 25. Again, I'll let this sit for a couple minutes. See what it brings. Yeah, I'm going to call this one at 26. Move on to the last one. Got the last one heating up now. Let that cook for a couple minutes. See what we end up with. We're going to call this one 29. Uh, that's quite a spread from 25 to 31. It makes it hard to uh, bias it when you're looking for a particular characteristic from this amp. It can be a little bit too hot, a little bit too cold. To complicate matters, these are all of the original uh, Fender tubes for the amplifier. So I got to get with the owner, uh, see what he wants to do, put these on a, a bookshelf somewhere. I'd like to pay attention to these four resistors right here that I had uh, pre previously replaced uh, some time ago. Make sure these resistors are good. They are a weak point, though I had bolstered them previously. I don't expect anything to be wrong with them, but I always like to check them first. 472. 472. 467. That's fine. 472, 473. Okay, those are just fine. Check the ones inside now. 1 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 1.7. 1 1.6. Okay, all those resistors tested good. Got the amp heating up right now. Auxiliary speakers connected. I have the tank connected off to the right over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of standby. I'm going to be using my plastic tweaker here uh, to go around some areas, make sure we don't have like a cold solder joint situation, any mechanical issue like that. Still need some attention right here. We're gonna see if that's just a dirty socket, microphonic tube, or a combination of both. Shut it down, drain it out, hit them with deoxid. There's no loose components though that I see causing, causing any problems. Got the tubes removed from the sockets, hit it with some deoxid. Got a uh, old 12AX7 that I used to clean the socket connections. And then I will uh, put the tubes back in, we'll set it back up. Even got these four sockets off camera as well. Let this sit up for a little bit, drain out, and then we'll test again. Connections have improved. You don't hear the crunch. This improved really nice, this one. This is nice and quiet too now. Quiet as a church mouse here. Quiet. 
and quiet, all quiet. But this one, this one right here, very microphonic, second tube. Quiet, quiet, microphonic. I think this is a significant problem. Put right on the right spot. This volume. That's trashed. Let's try that again. Much better. I'll do the next one for which I'll lower the volume. Very good. Yeah, that cleaned those up nice. Oh boy, those are terrible. I can already tell you that if those were bad, these are probably going to be bad on this channel. So I'm just going to knock those out and then we're going to run this test again. This channel is done up now. We're going to have a go at this channel. down a bit no shielding obviously with the floating guitar we're just checking the pots this good nice put that right there next is reverb works good. Vibrato I'll test later. I imagine it's okay. Cool. Old pot's working nice now. So, so far we got one microphonic tube that I temporarily replaced. A bunch of dirty pots. At least all of them on this side. And no doubt if they were on that side, they were on that side. Uh, that's taken care of. And goes without saying, every one of these tubes could probably benefit at this point uh, from being replaced because they're just so old. These are the original Fender tubes. Uh, a lot of these are original or just ancient or don't know the uh, history behind them. A complete tube refresh would do this amp good. But right now, as it sits, it's sounding good. Still, I'd recommend a tube refresh. We'll see what the owner says. I'll leave this like this for a while to sit and drain so everything comes out of the pots. And then once it's fully drained, we'll reassemble. I've got the amp back in the cabinet now. I'm going to put the brackets back on, wire everything in, put the tank back in. I'm going to give it another go, make sure everything's operating okay. And then I'm going to wait to hear back about what the owner of the amp wants to do with the tubes. There we go, it's all reassembled. Uh, we'll give it a go. Got everything plugged back in, we're gonna make sure everything's okay. I'm just gonna hit some notes here. We're just gonna put this amp off to the side and find out what the owner wants to do next. We've got all new tubes in. We're gonna test them out now, even though they've already been tested. I still look both ways when I cross a one-way street, if that gives you any idea. It's also both being a match quad set. They actually put the individual labels on each tube. I finished testing all the tubes. Everything tested good. I did find uh, the transconductance uh, slightly off on these, but admittedly it's tested obviously at an entirely different voltage based on the current values on here. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to see how it does in the amp. The point is everything's good. I'm going to proceed. And this is just going to be an entire complete swap out in accordance with the original diagram. That's all there is to it. I 
I've got everything warming up. I'll let it warm up for a couple of minutes before I take it out of standby. If I see anything egregious, I'll throw it back in the standby really quick. And here we go, taking out a standby. And I can see the first tube sitting at 40. Where this amp is and the higher voltage that this is going to be seeing, I'm probably going to bring this down to 30. 30 would be appropriate for this one. I'm going to do that now. Let's see, I'll split the difference. I'll say a 31. There we go, 31. We're going to move on to the other tubes. We're going to make sure that they're sitting in and around that as I make a note of these. Second one's looking good to 31 too, right on the money with the first one. Move on to the next. This one's showing 30, but the AC turned on. We'll say that's okay. Off by one milliamp. This one also 30, AC running. Again, off by one. We're going to say that these four tubes are extremely well uh, balanced, well matched. I'm calling it good. We're going to put the cover back on. Since it's a twin, we decided to <laughs> test it as twins. And we'll be using uh, both inputs and uh, going through some of our song books here. So I got the wife on the, actually we're both on the same normal input, but wife's on one guitar, I'll be on the other. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>